Hello students, my name is Archivist Nico, and welcome to our very first episode of the History of Exandria. Today, we will be exploring the lives of the Briarwoods, so I hope you brought your journals and quills, because we're about to begin. Before the events that transpired in Whitestone, Delilah and Silas Briarwood led a simple life of relative ease within the boundaries of the Dwendalian Empire. While they were only minor nobles, their renown and powerful connections allowed them to live peacefully. Delilah spent her early days studying to become a mage at the Alabaster Lyceum in Iman before returning to her home in Wildmount. Things ended up taking a sudden turn for the Briarwoods as Silas fell terribly sick with a disease no one could find a cure for. Because of Delilah's immense love for her husband, she set out to find someone or something that could cure him. She was ultimately successful in finding a cure, however, she returned home too late and found that Silas had succumbed to his illness. Delilah was so distraught over his death that she was willing to do anything to bring him back. So, she began to delve further into her research and magic, and after failing to find a solution, she screamed her frustrations into the Astral Sea, and as she screamed, a voice whispered back to her, saying, I can help you. Unbeknownst to Delilah at the time, that voice belonged to the Whispered One, an ancient lich desperate to return to the material world. Delilah was visited by this whispered voice in her dreams, giving her directions of which she blindly followed in her immense grief. Eventually, these whispers led Delilah to one of the Whispered One's old laboratories. This voice offered Delilah a solution to her husband's death in exchange for her complete service and loyalty. Delilah agreed without a second thought, and was given information about the rites of vampirism. The Whispered One assisted Delilah in performing the rites on Silas, using part of his own power to bind Silas to him, ensuring the Briarwood's cooperation and servitude. Once the rite was completed, Silas was brought back as a vampire, and the Briarwoods were reunited once more. But, as was said previously, all of this came with a price. The Whispered One now tasked the Briarwoods with bringing him back into the material world. With Delilah's newfound power, she became the Archmage of Antiquities in the Cerberus Assembly within the Twindalian Empire. As time went on, however, people began to grow suspicious of Delilah's activities and the source of her power. And when Silas's undead nature was discovered, the Briarwoods were pursued and arrested due to necromancy being outlawed. They did manage to escape, however, and they fled to Port de Mali on the Menagerie coast. While the Briarwoods were taking refuge in Port de Mali, they met Dr. Anna Ripley, an ex-military scientist of the Empire who was also on the run. And since they all found common ground in wanting to avoid the Empire, they decided to work together. While trying to figure out where to go next, the three fugitives heard about a secluded city called Whitestone, located across the Lucidian Ocean on the continent of Tal'Dorei. This is when Delilah's cunning and cold nature really began to show. Delilah and Silas masqueraded as a lord and lady and traveled to Whitestone Castle, where they were welcomed as guests of the current ruling family of Whitestone, the Dorolos. Over a period of time, the Briarwoods continued to make frequent trips to the city, slowly but surely building their relationship with the family. Once the Briarwoods felt that they established a strong relationship with them, Delilah began planning their coup of Whitestone. The Briarwoods started by making alliances with the various denizens of Whitestone and recruiting a few people within Whitestone Castle itself. And then, that fateful day arrived as the Dorolos decided to hold a feast in the Briarwoods' honor, and it was at this feast that the Briarwoods decided to strike. Their allies violently stormed the castle, killing or capturing anyone that dared to oppose them. The Dorolo family was massacred except for two members, Percival, the third born, and Cassandra, Percy's youngest sister. The two of them were kept as slaves and tortured by Anna Ripley, but Percy was able to flee with the help of Cassandra. However, during their escape, Cassandra was shot by several arrows and Percy was forced to leave his sister behind. Percy escaped with a burning vengeance in his heart that one day he'll return to avenge the deaths of his family. Now that the Briarwoods had seized control of Whitestone, they further cut off the city from the rest of Tal'Dorei in order to maintain their secret of the Dorolo's demise, as well as Silas's vampirism. This isolation caused the city's people to plunge into an era of hopelessness and hardship. Over the years following their rise to power, the Briarwoods began excavating large portions of the ground underneath Whitestone Castle. 
In doing so, they uncovered a ziggurat, a magical holy place dedicated to the worship of Ayun. The Briarwoods created labs underneath the city where they worked closely with Dr. Ripley to refine whitestone ore into residuum. They used this residuum to begin their work on a dark ritual that was all a part of a long and elaborate plan to bring the Whispered One back. But Ripley, knowing the malicious nature of the Briarwoods, thought to leave Whitestone before her usefulness expired. However, she was caught trying to escape and was sent to rot in the dungeons of the castle. The Briarwoods did eventually break away from their idea of isolating Whitestone and began to form stronger diplomatic ties with Sovereign Uriel Tal'Dorei III. They made a visit to Amon to discuss new trade opportunities between Tal'Dorei and Wildmount by constructing a bridge near Whitestone across the Searing Channel that would connect the two continents. Sovereign Uriel decided to host a feast where diplomats from all across the world would come to discuss business, and this included the Briarwoods. And it was at this feast that the Briarwoods encountered Vox Machina for the first time, and among them was Percy Dorolo. And during the feast, it became clear that Sovereign Uriel was under the magical influence of Silas, insisting that the Sovereign need not send soldiers to Whitestone, but instead to allow the city to remain independent. Once the feast was over, Vaxeldan, a member of Vox Machina, attempted to sneak into the Briarwoods' room to uncover more about their intentions, but was caught in the act. A battle broke out between the Briarwoods and Vox Machina, but the Briarwoods were able to escape and flee back to Whitestone, leaving Vox Machina to face the consequences of their actions in Iman. After being released from their house arrest, Vox Machina traveled directly to Whitestone in pursuit of Silas and Delilah. Upon arriving in Whitestone, they found that the people in the city itself were in a dark and hopeless state, and the Sun Tree, a sacred monument created by Pelor, had been defiled. And as a warning, the Briarwoods hung a series of bodies from the branches of the tree that were dressed and painted to look like each member of Vox Machina. Shaken by what they had seen, Vox Machina rallied a few remaining Dorolo allies to form a rebellion against the Briarwoods. And during this time, Percy discovered that his sister Cassandra survived and was being held by Percy's old professor, Byron Anders. Vox Machina managed to breach Anders' estate and narrowly saved Cassandra's life as Percy delivered the final shot that killed his old professor. The Briarwoods began to feel the heat of Percy's revenge and fled deeper underneath Whitestone Castle. Their plans were not meant to come to fruition to the winter solstice in a few days, but they needed to expedite things with Vox Machina hot on their heels. As Vox Machina continued deeper underneath the castle, they entered the room in which Ripley used acid to refine Whitestone ore into residuum. And it was here that Cassandra betrayed Vox Machina and locked them within the room, but not before Vaxeldan managed to escape. However, the Briarwoods entered and Silas placed Vax under his influence and took both him and Cassandra deeper into the tunnels. Vox Machina were able to break free from the trap and catch up to the Briarwoods at the Ziggurat, where a devastating battle ensued. Heavy blows were dealt to both sides, and during the battle, Silas was killed by a direct blast of radiant light from Keyleth, freeing Vax and Cassandra from his magical influence. Delilah was distraught by the death of her husband, and now fueled by rage, she continued forward and completed the ritual before Vox Machina was able to stop her. The ritual manifested an anomalous hovering orb of destruction and anti-magic. This shocked not only Vox Machina, but Delilah as well, as it became clear that not even she knew what this ritual would truly bring. Amidst this confusion, Percy's inner demon Orthax became unleashed and took control of Percy's actions as he attempted to kill Delilah. But Percy overcame the demon and refused to succumb to vengeance. However, Cassandra was not as quick to forgive her, and she drove her blade through Delilah's throat, finally bringing an end to the Briarwoods. Vox Machina returned to the surface of Whitestone, where Percy and Cassandra reclaimed their home for the Dorillos. The only thing left was that strange floating orb within the Ziggurat. While it was difficult to study and discern its true nature, Alora Vysurin, a mage in the Tal'Dora Council, and Vexalia, a member of Vox Machina, were able to discover that the orb was some kind of magical siphon into the Shadowfell. Now, the Shadowfell is a twisted dark mirror plane to Exandria that can serve as a way to transition souls from life to death, and vice versa. Some time passed, and Vox Machina continued on their journey, unaware, however, of the machinations that still lay underneath the surface. 
A cult known as the Remnants was formed by devout followers of the Whispered One. They continued the work that had begun with the Briarwoods, which allowed the Whispered One to use his necromantic powers to resurrect Delilah. Delilah then led the cultists to a second ziggurat located within the Smolder Crown Mountains in Marquette to continue their attempts in bringing back their master. About a year went by before a barbarian half-orc by the name of Lionel Gayhart stumbled upon the second ziggurat in a strange orb surrounded by cultists. Lionel quickly fled the scene and relayed this information to Vox Machina, who urgently traveled to Marquette, and upon arriving at the ziggurat, Vox Machina came face to face with the resurrected Delilah Briarwood. Delilah was able to escape through the second orb, utilizing it as a portal to the Shadowfell. Within this realm, Delilah fled to the city of Thar Amphala. Vox Machina gave chase, and once they reached this city, they witnessed what Delilah had been working towards this entire time, the resurrection of the Whispered One. And with the portal to the Material Plane finished, the Whispered One teleported the entirety of Thar Amphala out of the Shadowfell. Vox Machina engaged their enemies in battle, where Percy managed to kill Delilah in the fray. However, Vaxeldan was killed at the hands of the Whispered One, and Vox Machina were forced to retreat. Though the Briarwoods were slain, the help that they provided the Whispered One allowed him to complete the rites to ascend to godhood. And with his newfound power, he resurrected his loyal followers, Delilah and Silas, once more, before continuing his plans to enslave the world under his rule. He then brought to life a giant undead Earth Titan to carry the city of Tharamphala. Vox Machina, after resurrecting Vaxeldan and gathering allies, pursued the Whispered One to the Tower of Entropis in Tharamphala. However, to the surprise of Vox Machina, the Briarwoods were alive and ambushed them before they could reach the Whispered One at the top. Vox Machina were barely able to escape with their lives, but returned the following morning to continue their push to the top of the tower. When Vox Machina returned, the Briarwoods once again engaged them in battle. And things became dire for the Briarwoods, as Delilah suffered serious blows from Vox Machina. Delilah reached out to Silas as they attempted to make their escape. However, Vixalia landed a killing arrow shot that pierced Delilah, and Silas watched as the life faded from Delilah's eyes. He screamed out in sorrow and rage, but knew he was outmatched, and so he dissipated into his missed form before Vox Machina could kill him. And with the Briarwoods out of the way, Vox Machina continued after the Whispered One and were ultimately able to defeat him and save the world from enslavement. The Briarwoods story doesn't end here though. Silas recovered from his wounds and was filled with a vengeance, and so he began to plot his revenge on the people that took Delilah away from him. A year following the fall of the Whispered One, Percy and Vexalia held a rehearsal dinner for their wedding celebration. This is where Silas would enact his revenge. During the dinner, Silas poisoned the wine, causing most of the guests and Vox Machina to fall unconscious. Only Grog, Derig, and Trinket managed to shrug off the effects and stand against Silas and his horde of vampires. In the ensuing battle, Percy and Vexalia were captured and brought to a nearby cliffside where Silas confronted them face to face. Fueled by rage and the desire for revenge, Silas vowed to destroy everything they held dear. And with Percy and Vexalia bound in chains, Silas threw the two of them off the cliffside towards the roaring ocean below. As they crashed into the water, Percy managed to escape from his bindings. Vexalia, however, was unable to escape in time and drowned. Meanwhile, Grog and Derek managed to revive the rest of Vox Machina and then began rushing towards the desperate shouting of Percy. Upon finding him, Keyleth swam out and brought Vexalia's corpse to the shore, where Pike was able to revive her. During this time, Silas and his vampires began battling with Grog, and things were looking grim until the rest of Vox Machina arrived at the battle. Silas and his vampire horde began to falter. Silas saw the tides turning and attempted to escape, but the radiance of Vexalia's weapon brought him down. And as Silas began dissolving into his mist form, Vexalia gave one last look at the man who had caused her husband and friends so much heartache and grief. And with the blessing of the Dawnfather, the radiant sunlight the Vexalia emitted destroyed Silas Briarwood for good. The impact that the Briarwoods left would be felt for years to come. Not only were they responsible for the murder of the Dorolo family, but they were also a main factor in the Whispered One returning and almost enslaving the world. But in the end, the Dorolo family was avenged and the Whispered One was destroyed, finally bringing the Briarwood story 
to a close. Or so we thought. Thirty years have passed since the fall of the Whispered One, and it would seem that Delilah, or maybe just a fragment of her, lives on within a curious undead warlock named Laudna. We're unsure of how much of Delilah still lives on, but it would certainly appear that the Briarwood story isn't quite over yet. And with that, our lesson of the Briarwoods comes to an end. Thank you all so much for watching, I certainly hope you enjoyed it. If you're looking for ways to support the channel, be sure to subscribe. You can also check out my community Discord server and Patreon page. Links to those are in the description down below. And so, with all of that being said, thank you all so much for watching. I hope you all have an absolutely wonderful rest of your day. Don't forget to love each other, and I'll see you all in the next lesson. I would just like to take a second to give a huge shout out to all of my wonderful Patreon supporters. Thank you to my expositors, Leah, Olivia, Sean, pseudonym, the DM's Den, and Hannah. Thank you to all of my archivists, Annika, Daniel, Elliot, Emerson, Melissa, Noel. And thank you to all of my high curators, Adam, IMI, Andrea, Dustin, Rin, and Sylvia. Thank you all so very much for showing your continued support. It truly does mean a lot to me. Stay awesome, and I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day.